In today's video, you're gonna learn how to use the brand new simulation system inside of Cinema 4D S26 to create realistic dynamic ropes. Let's head on in and let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and let's get started. First thing we need is a straight spline. The best place to find that is up here in the asset browser. Open it up and search spline. And if you scroll down, you'll see some new splines down here. Grab this segment and drag it out into your viewport. And all that is is a straight spline that we're gonna use to create our rope or noodle, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, next thing we wanna do is go into our rotation mode and rotate it. I'm holding shift down so it uh, constrains it to five degrees to make it exactly 90. Next thing we'll do is go into our segment and turn on the offset or just move it so it's aiming straight up in the air. This way we can set this length to as high as we want and it'll grow up from zero and we can make a long, as long a rope as we want. In this case, I'm just gonna type in a thousand centimeters and we also need to tell it how many points along this rope that we want to use. Now two is too little. Uh, I find that under half is a good start of your length in centimeters. So let's just start with 300 and uh, we might tweak it a little bit later. Okay, so this is just a spline. We now want to sweep this spline to make it an actual physical noodle in, in 3D. So what do we need to do that? Well, let's go into our spline menu here and grab an end side. And then we need to sweep these uh, two. So let's go ahead and hit Shift C. Now Shift C I use all the time. And all you have to do is type in what you're looking for and it'll find it. This works across the board inside of Cinema 4D. So if you don't know where something is in one of these menus, Shift C, type it in and look right there, sweep. I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna add it right to my object menu. Now, we need to sweep the end side along the segment. So go ahead and make them children of the sweep. And you see now we have this big old noodle. Well, that's too big. Let's go into our end side and turn down the radius to something like two centimeters. And we also wanna turn up the segments, uh, or I'm sorry, we also wanna turn up the sides on our end side so there's uh, a little bit more roundness on the noodle. Okay, so now we got our noodle. What do we do now? How do we make it dynamic and how do we make it pile up on the floor? Well, the next thing we need is a floor for it to pile up on. So let's go ahead and do that. And in this menu here, you're gonna find a plane. Go ahead and grab the plane, then grab your sweep again, move to the move tool over here and move it up in this direction so that it's off the floor so that it can fall down and hit the floor. Okay, we have all the pieces set up. We just have to turn on all the simulation and dynamics and all that. The way to do that, Let's first select our segment, go up to the tags menu, and you'll find some new tags here. In S26, uh, a, a few things changed. First of all, the original dynamics that have been around for quite a long time are still here. They're under a new tag called uh, bullet tags. So rigid body, soft body. If you've watched other Grayscale Gorilla tutorials where we reference these tags, they're no longer under the dynamics tags. They're under here in bullet. Um, so that's just a little warning for you guys if you're watching older tutorials, they're all here, they're right there. But today we're gonna be talking about the brand new simulation tags, which are down here. This is a new engine that's part of S26 Cinema 4D, and it allows you to do some really cool things with cloth, rope, colliders, that renders very quickly, and it simulates and calculates very quickly. So let's get to it, let's show you how to do it. So with the segment selected, you want to add a rope tag, and the rope tag is going to instantly make this spline dynamic, and it's going to, if we hit play, just fall right through uh, the, the floor, <laughs> okay? That's not what we want. We want it to pile up on the floor. So let's go to the plane. Let's create uh, an another tag. Let's go into the tags menu. Go to simulation tags and go uh, select the collider tag. Now the, the collider tag is gonna make the floor stand still and interact properly with our rope. And if we hit play, you can see, not only is it very fast, uh, but it piles up very quickly on the floor here. And we are seeing some intersections. So how do we fix that? Well, we do have to tell our uh, rope tag how thick this spline is supposed to be. In other words, how thick uh, is, the, is the noodle here? We didn't tell it that. So that's why there's intersections. So down here under radius, instead of 0.5, we're gonna put in two, which is the number we had uh, when we swept the uh, end side here. Okay. So now you see the uh, it's piling up on the floor. And if we pause it when it's done, uh, we see um, a pretty good job. We have a little bit of intersections here that we may have to solve. 
Um, sometimes I just turn up the radius a little bit here, and that seems to solve some of the uh, really close radius um, interactions here. And by the way, I'm still learning this. S26 is brand new. And uh, as I learn things, I'll be creating more videos to show you how to set this up. Um, but that's the gist of it, guys. Uh, let me show you really quickly how fast this goes. If you just copy and paste, I'm grabbing the sweep and I hit Command C, Command V, and then I move it over. Now I can make a bunch of clones of this thing. And I haven't got it to work directly with the cloner yet. If anybody has any suggestions on how to do that, please put it in the comments. I would love to try that. Uh, but just by copying and pasting it over and hitting play, uh, you're seeing it all fall down to the ground here. And we even have some uh, segments that are intersecting over here. So we get that weird uh, thing. So I think I duplicated it and didn't move it. Same with this one, I think. Yeah, there's two there. So I had a couple extra. Okay, so now, there you go, boom. You can make these different thicknesses. You can make them, if we go into one of these tags, you can make them uh, different radiuses and then adjust the radius on the end side. Uh, you can even mess with the bendiness, stretchiness. There's a lot of settings in here to make it more elastic, more like a rubber band, more like a solid noodle. Uh, so definitely play around with that. So let me show you this scene here, which is just a slightly more elaborate version of what we just built. And of course, in this case, we have lighting and textures and a bunch of stuff. Just wanted to show you uh, some little added tweaks I did to this scene so that you could replicate the thumbnail a little bit closer. So first of all, we use a Redshift object tag. I put all of the sweeps and all of the uh, dynamic ropes inside of a null. And on top of that null, I added a Redshift object. And under the geometry tab, I turned on override and turned on tessellation right here. What this does is just round off our noodles a little bit more. So sometimes you need less segments for it to calculate faster. And honestly, it looks uh, a little bit more realistic. Uh, collisions work better with less uh, segments with this uh, solver so far. So if you ever have a good simulation, you just want to round off your edges. You can, of course, put it in um, you know a subdivision surface. But the faster way to do it, if you're using Redshift, to just use a geometry tab inside of the redshift object, turn on your tessellation, and then when you hit render, uh, it's going to round off all of your corners and all your noodles and all this stuff. Just give it a nice um, edge there. Okay, so that's the first tip. Uh, the, the other difference here is I used a Like It Pro Psych, uh, and this is just a photographic backdrop. This is included with uh, Grayscale Gorilla Plus. It's right up here in your Grayscale Gorilla menu if you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus customer. Under Light Kit Pro Plus, you can just grab one of these psychs. We have a ton of different photographic psychs to get these looks to give you a beautiful backdrop for any one of your projects. Let's zoom back in. We have a really simple uh, patterned texture on the ground here. And then we have some really basic plastic materials that I added to the noodles. Now, of course, I could use any one of these thousands of other materials and woods and all this stuff that's included in Plus, of course. We created all this stuff to speed up this part of the workflow. And the last thing I wanted to show you was I added a Redshift camera uh, tag, and this is just to get a little bit of depth of field. We have some other videos on YouTube all about how to set all that up. And of course, we have other videos all about uh, how to set up HDRIs and use HDRI link to light your scene very quickly and let you experiment with your lighting. So you can see we have a really nice um, uh, studio light here that if we move it around, we get some really nice interactions. So if you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus customer, you know, go ahead and drop an HDRI link in there and get some nice lighting and materials and all this stuff. But that's essentially how I built all this out. If I missed anything, if you have any specific questions, please hit me up in the comments below. I would love to uh, tackle them. And of course, as we learn more about the new simulation system here in Cinema 4D S26, uh, you can uh, be sure that we're gonna make some more videos as well. Thanks again for watching. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe down below. We have a ton of other videos that show you how to create better looking renders and also work more efficiently inside of Cinema 4D. Until then, we hope to see you very soon in another video. Bye bye for now.